For those just tuning in, this is the second part of the tour. If you didn't see the first part where we walk around the exterior of the van, I suggest you go check that out first. There's a link below in the description. All right, guys, so we're gonna move into the inside of the van. We're gonna start with the cockpit area. So right now I'm currently sitting in the passenger seat. It's on a swivel, it can spin around, and obviously I can sit this direction, but it can also spin around and somebody can ride in the van if they're going somewhere with me. Now, typically nobody rides in the van with me, so I usually always have it in this position, and that is convenient. Now, one piece that I get asked a lot about is this bar that I have going across the top of the dash. This was actually made uh, by a buddy of mine that uh, is an electrician, my buddy Scott, and he bent it out of EMT and it makes a great place to put RAM mounts. And so you, I've got my cell phone mount, I've got my Garmin GPS communications, and then I have my tablet mount here. And then my tablet I use for navigation. So I use Gaia GPS and Google Maps and different things like that. I also have a couple spots here uh, where I can have these magnetic little uh, tripod mounts for when I'm filming for the channel. I can put those there and set up cameras and do different things. So uh, that's super handy. Right now, this is kind of a new thing, and I haven't really decided where this is going to live full time, but this is an antenna for my GMRS uh, radio that I mounted underneath the seat of the driver's side, and then I have the control or the hand controller right there. So, but I'm not really sure where I want to put the antenna, so I kind of just temporarily put it there for right now. Got a cup holder on each side that also mounts to this uh, bar. And then uh, as far as some additions to the van, I added a vacuum gauge, a uh, transmission temp gauge, and a tachometer. I've got a switch on this side. This turns on the fan for my new transmission cooler, which is working good. And then uh, I use my phone for controlling a lot of other things in the van through my Red Arc system, which oftentimes will sit here so then it gives me all the different controls that I need to turn on lights uh, engage my locker and some and some different things like that uh, just basic things got the standard cubby that is full of junk uh, that comes with the van I've got a cup holder set here this is for my water so I usually keep water down here and then I keep coffee in that one and the reason why I do it that way is because I oftentimes get sun beaming through the window there and so that helps keep my coffee warm but it kind of sucks if you want cold water so i keep the water down in this one so that that way it stays cool um getting older so i need glasses so i've got a spare set of glasses sitting there small waste basket and then behind the seat here i keep just kind of a lot of stuff that uh just kind of junk i've got first aid kit back there i keep spare water back there i've got a set of binoculars back there that i just kind of keep sitting in the wheel well uh, right here is my desk. So this is where I work. I have my laptop and you know, various things. Uh, I've got a couple places. I use a lot of magnets in the van. So I've got a couple places where I've put metal plates. So like if I'm doing voiceovers, I just put that there and then I can kind of talk and do my voiceovers. But this table does come off of this arm and I can stow it. Uh, back over beside the bed but i do have it set up to where it can also clip in to the side here so if i'm just like traveling and i'm not doing any like major off-road where i'm worried about stuff bouncing around i can just keep my laptop and everything set up and clipped in so that way it's always ready for me to do some editing video editing but this arm swings around so that way i can kind of get out and and move it out of my way if i want and then it's connected to a box down here on the floor that is kind of a temporary because this is going to change here in the next year. But right now, this kind of stores uh, supplements and things like that for Daisy. And then I've got I keep a couple cameras up here as well. All right, so going over my basic kitchen setup, I have an Iceco JP50. I really like this refrigerator. It works really well in this space. It fits well between my stove and my seat. Uh, I can access the food here easily if I'm cooking inside, but then I have it on a slide that, all, that you can get for the JP50, and that's great for if I'm putting groceries in or uh, trying to access food from the outside, I can just grab that slide and pull the fridge close to the door and be able to get to the food that's inside. So. Really nice setup, I really like it. Uh, the fridge works great, and like I said, it just fits the space really nice. 
Uh, as far as my cooking setup here is this is just a stove that I found on Amazon. It's just a typical RV style stove. I don't remember the exact brand, but uh, it does connect into my seven gallon propane tank and is all like hard plumbed in. So it's just convenience. I all I have to do is just open the lid and I have access to the stove. And I do like having the lid because then that way I can close it down and I don't have to worry about dust and dirt and other crap uh, getting on top. Plus it just gives me uh, another table space if I need it when I'm not using the burners. Underneath, I have some canned food storage and I keep uh, the cast iron skillet and my plates that I use when I'm cooking inside the van. This actually closes down so that way none of that stuff falls out while I'm driving, but then it pops up and gives me a nice place to do some prep and some different things. I got a piece of leather here from a local leather shop and it just makes a nice little decorative um, piece of trim here that works well with the hinge. All right, so real quick, I did wanna show you guys one thing because I get asked this a lot about how I heat the van and I have a Propex heater. It's actually built into this box and you can't see it, but the Propex heater works very similar to the uh, diesel heaters that you might have seen in the fact that it, instead of diesel, it burns propane, but it the combustion happens in a, in a separate chamber and then that is intaked and exhausted out of the van. So none of that is staying with inside the van. And then what you have is a heat exchanger and it sucks air into the heater and then just blows it out this exhaust port here. So uh, inside here is pulling in air and then exhaust it here. So basically what's just happening is air circulation through the heater, through a heat exchanger. So you end up with really nice dry, uh, warm heat. And then the other reason why I chose the Propex heater for me is because my van is a gas van. So going with a diesel heater just didn't make sense because I would have had to have three fuels on board. I already had propane for the cook stove. So having those two systems work on the same fuel made the most sense. The other thing I really like about the Propex heater is it has a true thermostat. So it's not just an on or off. It can control itself based on the temperature in the van. So I can set it and just basically walk away and it maintains the van at a nice temperature. It never get, doesn't get too hot and it doesn't get too cold, which is great for when you're sleeping. I can set the temperature to a certain setting so that way I can just go to bed. I don't wake up like sweating hot because it's gotten too hot in the van and I don't wake up cold because if it starts to drop below the temperature that I'm comfortable, it just turns itself on in the night and heats the van. So I really like that. Um, the diesel heaters, especially the cheap diesel heaters, they just kind of have on and off. So you don't really get that level of control. All right. So we're kind of in the living space of the van here. Now this is also, you know, my bed, but it makes into this, you know, to where I can kind of sit and be in a couch. I wanted the overall feel of the van to just feel like I was in a cab in the woods. So that's why I have all the different woodwork in here. I've got the pine tongue and groove. You know, a few little decorations and things that just kind of give it that woodsy cabin feel. But this here that I'm sitting on, like I said, this is right now kind of set up as a couch. It slides forward and makes into a full size bed. So plenty comfortable for me. I've got uh, two inches of gel foam, four inches of memory foam. So extremely comfortable. Underneath the bed, I have, uh, it's, it's built into like three different sections so it can articulate. Now, when I originally designed the bed, I, I, I made it to where it articulated in three different ways, which over time I realized that I didn't really use. And so now it just basically goes from couch to bed and I don't really use it that way. But because I originally designed it that way, it's got three different compartments underneath the mattress that I can use for storage. Uh, and I have things like dry food products some camera gear, uh, out of season clothing, like right now it's summertime. So I've got, you know, winter boots, winter jackets, things like that in the center section in the winter, I'll put like swim shorts, uh, you know, flip flops, things like that, that I don't normally use. I like to keep that stuff still in the van, just in case you have some unseasonally, uh, wet, unseasonal weather that you might not be prepared for, but it's not something I access a lot. In the back compartment, in the third compartment, I keep just like extra toiletries, paper towels, uh, you know, things like that, that again, um, I can either access that from the back doors or I can access it from inside as well, but that's all built into the bed frame. 
Uh, on the side here, I have uh, my clothing storage. So I've got two cabinets here. Uh, this one's like t-shirts, some, some towels, swim shorts, and some things like that. And then down here is where I've got jeans, some more towels, sweatpants, and, and that kind of stuff. This one here is just kind of a little nighttime junk drawer where like when I'm sleeping, I just keep some extra glasses. You know, I've got some extra charge cords, things like that, that uh, I might keep in there as well. And then this space here, which we'll get into in, in more detail, is where all my electronics are as far as my house battery system, charging my house battery system, switching on lights, switching off lights, uh, other components and things like that. All right guys, so we're gonna talk a little bit about my battery system. I don't wanna to get too detailed on this because this could get very long, uh, but I just wanna go in through some finer points here. So I have the Red Arc Manager 30 and the Red Arc Red Vision system. This basically handles all my charging of my two uh, Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium batteries that I have. I can charge via my alternator, which uh, I did upgrade the alternator to a high output alternator, which I do recommend if you're gonna be running house batteries is to upgrade your stock alternator. It also handles my solar charging, which you saw on top, but it also gives me a shore power uh, option. So I've got a plug on the outside of the van. And if I'm somewhere that has AC, I can just plug an extension cord right into the van and charge via that way. But the thing I really like about this system is it also allows me to not only monitor that charging progress through either this control panel or the, a single app on my phone, but it allows me to monitor and switch on other devices. So in the way of monitoring, I can monitor the uh, two temperature sources. So I've got set up for monitoring the inside of the van and the outside of the van. So I can see what the temperature is inside and outside. I also can monitor up to six water tanks. Now I only have one, I've got a seven gallon water tank that's mounted uh, with a little DC pump just underneath my clothes storage here and I can monitor how much water is in that tank. And again, I can see that from my phone or from uh, this control panel. But the other nice thing is, is I can switch on things. So in the case like my interior lighting in here, I can turn that on and off through my phone and I can also control some other devices that I've got wired up like my air compressor. Uh, I've got it wired up to this and then I have all my external lighting also wired up to this. The other last little cool thing I want to talk about about the Red Vision is you can set three triggers. So you can uh, basically supply a 12 volt source to those triggers. So like in my case, I have the three things I have connected are my uh, dash stereo. I have my rear reverse lights and then I have my high beams uh, wired into the Red Vision so that that way I can, in the case of my stereo, I can listen to music at camp and by just turning on the stereo on the phone and it, the stereo is wired and gets its 12 volts from the house battery so I don't have to worry about uh, deadening my start battery and I don't have to turn the key on. I can just do it from here. But when I do turn the key on, it still works like a normal car stereo would and activates and starts up. The other nice thing is, like I said, I've got the reverse uh, light bar hooked up. So when I go into reverse, it automatically comes on. And then I've got all my diode dynamic lights on the front. They're also set up on my high beams. So as soon as I click on my high beams, they also automatically turn on for me. So just to add some convenience. And like I said, you can set those up any way that you would like just by supplying a switchable 12 volt source to the trigger points on the Red Arc uh, Red Vision and then programming what circuits from the Red Vision you would like to turn on. So uh, really cool system, really like it. And then like I said, then the other thing is I have a uh, 1000 watt uh, inverter from Zamp and that handles all my AC needs uh, in the van. All right, so one last little note on my uh, charge system in the van is I also keep a Jackery 300 in the van here, and I use that for power outside the van if I need it, but I also just keep it hooked up and working behind my seat here, and I have the charger for it plugged into my inverter. That way it's always charged and ready to go, but it also just makes a convenient hub for me right here where I have my little desk set up to be able to run my laptop and charge camera batteries and anything else that I need. So up here, I have a Max Air fan. This fan can be used even in bad weather. So if it's raining, I can still have it open. It's got a big enough hood that it will still work. 
It allows me to exhaust or intake, which is great for when I'm cooking. So that way I can have it on exhaust and kind of exhaust those cooking smells and fumes out of the van. It does get kind of gummed up from that, so I have to clean it fairly often. As you can see, you can, there's some residue on it right now. But the other nice thing about the exhaust is I can have this set to exhaust and then I can crack those back windows I was telling you. So when it's hot in the summer when I'm sleeping, it will pull air in from those back windows and then I get nice cool air coming right across my face uh, and then it just pulls it right up and out of the van. One trick there is though, is make sure that you have all your other windows shut so that that way the only air source it can pull from is the one that you have cracked back there and then you'll get maximum airflow. But yeah, this works really great for helping uh, me keep cool in the summertime, but also exhaust out any cooking smells. So another thing you guys might be noticing is these different Claymore lights that I have inside the van. I do have some built-in lighting in the van, but these are handy for when I'm filming. It allows me to move them around. They're all on magnets, so I can kind of just pop them off and then I can move them around the inside of the van and supply more light in areas that I need it, specifically when I'm filming episodes for you guys. This particular light I'll even use outside a lot for uh, supplying some light on the scene when I'm filming around the campfire. But it just gives me a little bit more versatility. And for the most part, you know, I end up using these lights actually more than the lights that I built in because they don't use as much power as the cheap LED strip lights that I put in, bought from Amazon. So I end up using these more often than not anyhow. So as I mentioned a minute ago, I do have a seven gallon water tank that lives in this space down here. There's a 12 volt pump hooked to that and then it goes up to this faucet so I can turn the water on and off. This is the inlet so that I can refill the tank whenever I need to. And then, like I said, I can monitor how much water's in the tank through the Red Arc system. Uh, I pretty much just use this faucet for getting drinking water or filling like my coffee water in the morning or any other uh, cooking water that I may need. And I just fill like my bush pot or uh, whatever vessel I need to fill. If I do need to spray off some stuff, I keep a length of about six feet of a ho garden hose down here and it just screws right on just like a regular garden nozzle and I can spray things off outside. Down here, I've got a couple storage cubbies. This one primarily holds tripods. This is where I keep uh, all my tripods for filming or photography uh, and keep them in here. I also have the length of the hose that uh, I showed you with the water spigot. Uh, this one here is just kind of a junk drawer of random things. I've got fill hoses, um, knife sharpener, tongs, extra plastic bags, uh, flavored water, just a bunch of different various things that I like to be able to access right here from the door when I'm outside. All right, folks, so Sasquatch is ever evolving and I'm constantly making changes to it in an attempt to make Sasquatch the ultimate overland adventure van. It's got some major upgrades that are gonna be coming later this fall and we'll get into those videos once those parts actually arrive. But as it is, I couldn't be happier with the progress of the van so far to this date. If you're one of my typical subscribers, I hope that you did find something about this uh, that answered maybe some questions that you've had as you've watched the build progress and you've watched the adventure videos that we've done with the van. If you're new to my channel, maybe check out some of my old videos. You can see some of the cool adventures and overland trips that we have done with the van in the past and then subscribe so that you can catch the new trips that will come along in the future. Anyhow, folks, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please do leave a like if you did. If you have any comments or questions about the build or feel that I missed anything that you'd like to know more about, please leave those down below and we'll catch you guys again outside.